Hey, what's up everybody? It's uh, September 1st, Sunday, just around 11 o'clock, and out here in the bee yard to do two quick things. One, I wanted to follow up from last week when I added some of the Man Lake Ultra Bee bee pollen on top of the inner cover. I imagine it's all gone since the bees have been actively feeding on the open feeder that I have. I put four scoops on each of the hives. So like I said, I don't anticipate, or I do anticipate there being none left. So if that's the case, I'm gonna add some more. I'm also gonna be feeding them, same method I did last time, using uh, some one-to-one -one syrup in the division board feeders. And this also doubles as hurricane preparation. So for any of our friends and followers and subscribers that aren't aware, there's a hurricane pretty much off the Florida coast. The weather guessers anticipate the hurricane being up here off the North Carolina coast and probably hitting us um, around Thursday. The last part of hurricane prep is simply using some ratchet straps to strap each of the hives down to the hive stand. I used this method last year. It worked ex extremely well with Hurricane Florence in Jacksonville, North Carolina. We had 35, I think, or 38 inches of rain. This bee yard's in a relatively low line area too, and surprisingly, I had no problems. As you can see, I have a very nice natural wind barrier around the hives, which I think helped as well. And they, they survived just fine using ratchet straps. So nothing extreme, pretty simple, pretty quick to do. Let's pop the top on hive number one. First, take a look and see how much pollen they have left over from last week. Hopefully it's none, which means they're taking it. And then I will fill up the division board feeder with some syrup. And it looks like this light, this, uh, this smoker is probably not going to cooperate with me today. Oh, so I was mistaken. I'm sure the camera can see that, but let's get a closer look. Check this out. There is a decent amount of pollen, pretty much all of it, left over. So, kind of concerns me. If you supplement any food with your bees, all the experienced beekeepers say they'll take it if they need it. So, the opposite of that is if they're not taking it, I imagine that's them telling me they don't need it. Which could be, you know, not necessarily a bad thing if they're getting pollen from uh, natural sources. However, the goldenrod is on the verge of blooming, which is great. However, like last year, same thing was happening. Florence came in, totally wiped out the goldenrod bloom. So let's, uh, let's just slide the super over, expose the division board feeder. And get them some food. It's been a while since I fed them one-to-one -one syrup, so they should take the entire gallon. I'm trying to beat the weather that's rolling in. We're supposed to get some rain. And it's as simple as that, feeding your bees. This is one of the reasons I keep the division board feeder off to the side. So I can simply slide the super over, or if I just have the cover on, I can slide the cover over. And I don't have to move everything totally out of the way. There's two entrances if you don't know. I just watch the other entrance as I'm filling it up and when it gets to the top. That's when you know you're full. I'm concerned with this hive. It wasn't looking too great last time, but I'm not doing a full hive inspection today. So I'll check on it next week after the storm rolls through. here too. I'm sure you can see this, but yeah, hive number two. Decent amount of pollen left. I thought they would have consumed that up. 
judging by how how active they've been on the open high feeder. All right, so no need to mess with that. that over. In fact, I can leave the top on. And let's see. See the other part of the feeder. that. Slide that on over. Done for now. Let's keep on moving down. I have number three. And if I had an auto leveling camera, that'd be pretty cool. Let's take a look here. Okay. Here we go. Grab the camera. Let's see. We got some different activity here. These bees are really enjoying the pollen. There's still a good amount left, considering they don't take too much per bee. Micrograms, I would imagine, but nonetheless. They're using it, so that's good. All right. Not trying to disturb them too much. Uh, let's see, catch the feeders up here. Yep. This hive's doing extremely well. They actually started building or drawing out the brand new super with wax and the queen start laying eggs in practically every cell. So that was seven days ago. They should be pretty close to being capped. And then next week when I come out, that super should have frames and frames and frames of capped brood. So that's something definitely to look forward to. Okay. That's that. And switch the camera around. Frame or hive number four, which you know it's only been a week, but trying to remember, I think I consolidated a hive over to this one because it wasn't doing all that great. It happens. Let's see. Let's see how they're doing with the pollen. Maybe I didn't give them any pollen. They're on the verge of not doing well. I cannot remember. What's up with this one? Hmm. Oh, you know what? Strange. Let's see. Down here. You know what? I don't think.
I don't think this one has a division board feeder. Because it had a... Uh, it had jars out front last time. Yeah, there's no division board feeder on this one. Let me check something real quick. All right, maybe I only had three division board feeders. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I don't think this hive was doing all that great. I mean, there's still some bees in here and everything, but uh, I think they re-swarmed. That was a swarm I caught, so. I'm going to have to go back to the house, get some jars for this one, and I'll, I'll feed them out front again. So, not to bore you with that, let me grab let me grab a ratchet trap just to show you all, because I don't think I have one right here. So yeah, let me grab a ratchet strap and just show you how easy it is to secure your hive to the hive stand. Absolutely no rocket science to this. Let me grab one. So when the hives get a little taller, and I know it all depends on how long of a ratchet trap you have, but I just take the one side, loop it around. Loop it around like that. I have some older... Let's see what's going on there. I have some older straps where I just tie them. Just tied them around the uh, the hive stand just to make it easy to connect and disconnect. And there you go, hurricane prep. So that was an older strap that I had without the ratchet part. So I just looped that around and tied it. It makes it a little easier to disconnect um, than having to have, have this part, the ratchet part, all the way down around the hot stand. And then on this side, that's it. Just loop it around and call it a day. So there you go. That's how to secure your beehive for a hurricane. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Cole's Farm, quick time in the bee yard. Uh, surprisingly, the bees did not take all the pollen, did not use all the pollen from last time. So that caught me off guard, judging by how they've been using the open feeder. I thought the pollen that was provided right on top of the inner cover would be all gone seven days later, but it's not. So, you know, it is what it is. Fed the bees. I got to get some jars for Hive 4 because I thought I had a division board feeder in there, but I don't. So I need to order one of those eventually. And that's it. I'll be providing some pollen uh, open feeding style in the backyard because they've been taking it and it's enjoyable to watch them, you know, feed on the pollen. And hurricane prep, just as you saw, it's as simple as that. Cheap old ratchet trap. Just loop it around your hive stand. I have mine on four by four by eights, which can accommodate about four hives in between the cinder blocks. And that's how I have mine set up as a base. So two center blocks below um, as the foundation if you want to call it that. Two vertical as the stand and then the 4x4x8 four by four by simply goes through if you can see that goes through the center block. Some people I've seen some folks have their 4x4s uh, four resting on top of the center blocks. I didn't really like that just because a tree falls on your stand strong enough wind my thoughts were it could topple over probably not because the hives are relatively heavy but i figured if you put the four by fours through the center blocks it just gives you that one more added layer of security because as you can see 
we have some pretty decent pine trees. They survived last storm, but they're a year older, so they're a little bigger. You never know, right? All right, that's enough of me talking. It is hot and humid today. It's in the mid 80s. I think the humidity is around 90%. I am sweating a lot more than I did last week. And it looks like we have a little bit of a storm rolling in if the weather hasn't changed too much. So that's that. Thanks for watching everybody. Cole's Farm here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Take a quick look at the front entrance of Hive 3. To close it out, my lighter, not lighter, but my smoker did not cooperate this time around. Unlike last time when I said it's worthwhile taking your time to make sure your smoker's lit, I didn't because I was being rushed a little bit, or I was rushing myself. I didn't want to get caught out here with the storm. So that's that, everybody. Cole's Farm. Pretty nice activity on the hives. Need to do some weed whacking again this year. So, shortish video. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, of course. If you haven't subscribed, subscribed to our channel, please do. If you hit the bell, you'll receive notifications for future videos. I'm not out here too much because it is the tail end of the season here in coastal Carolina. I'm making maybe one or two videos a month if I don't come out and just kind of film the entrance activity. So thanks again for watching everybody.